What's up? My name is Glue Boy. Welcome back to the channel. And uh, today is a video that is purely prompted by the fact that I just finished the Conrad Kerr's Primark book because this book is fucking fantastic. And this is my uh, more interesting method of doing my normal book supplement videos because this is my time to simp for the best Primark in this setting, Conrad Kerr's. Or, well, uh, my other favorite, because my one true favorite Primark is Robo Dorn, because Robo Dorn was my first, like, character foray into Warhammer. He was, you know, my exposure point. So he is always a very special place in my heart. But writing-wise, it's all Conrad. He is awful, <laughs> disgusting, psychologically very interesting. And that's the main thing. He's a very interesting character that on the surface you can brush off as edgy Batman. Because when you break him down to some of his core components, he kind of is. He stalks the night in a worse version of Gotham. He is justice. He's the hero they deserve, not the hero they want. Stuff, whatever. But he's so interesting because here's the thing. Conrad ticks all of my boxes for characters and media that I like. Because mainly, Conrad Kurz is a horrible, horrendous piece of shit that is justifying his existence. Because that is my favorite thing ever. My favorite movies, call me a film bro all you want, but Wolf of Wall Street, There Will Be Blood, any mobster movie ever, the plot is all about a main character following their ups and downs, mainly downs, as they are a horrible piece of shit and ruining everyone's life around them. But they're justified in their own head that they're the good guy, which is what I love about Conrad. But wait, you at home might be thinking to yourself, wait a second, Conrad Kurz isn't the best Primark. Uh, Lionel Johnson's the best. He's, he's cool, he fights good, he's green. Solid points, uh, I will admit, but uh, this is my time to <laughs> simp for a Primark. Uh, you can, you know, loud your own Primark reps in the comments. Feel free. Feel free to fill my comments with your favorite Primark. I'm just gonna go in and describe fully my reasons why I believe that Conrad Kurz is my favorite just written Primark in the setting. But first things first, I'm gonna break down why is Conrad the way he is? Because Conrad as we know him, the Night Haunter, justice and order given form, but through the mode of terrorism in the most horrific acts of torture. Conrad Kurz and his Night Lords kill a hundred people to pacify a world of billions. Meanwhile, everyone pins them as the villains and as monsters for getting all these planets under compliance with way less of a kill count. Because as much as like Gilman or Dorn will give him immense shit, they're killing millions of people and bringing in a broken world. Conrad, when he brings a world in, it's pretty intact. He just has to commit some horrific acts to do so. That's his main philosophy. The ends justify the means, and he will inflict that terror because he believes only people can listen to him and listen to order through terror. And this is not a justification for Conrad because he's fucking wrong and insane. He is batshit. Because listen, I understand. You know what? Crime, not a great thing. I don't like it. However, when your response to that is skinning people, I, I got a bit of a problem with it, you know? I don't think it's the right response. But anyways, the way he is, the reason he is, Conrad Kurz landed on the planet of Nostromo. And Nostromo, like I mentioned, is shitty Gotham. Crime is rampant. Everything is insane. There is no concept of justice on Nostromo. In fact, the word is a joke. It's a place where crime and horrific acts are commonplace. Crime lords run everything. Just, there's a main cultural element of not investigating screams or people in peril because it's just a bad call. You're just gonna go in there and get yourself killed too. There's actually two points in the Conrad Kirsch Primark book where this like comes up, this acceptance of crime. Like the first one is uh, Conrad Kurz intercedes on a uh, sexual assault and the woman in that situation doesn't scream because there's no fucking point. No one's gonna come anyways. And then the other part, he breaks into someone's apartment who has a fuck ton of locks on their door and she's completely okay with the fact that yet yeah, like these locks don't mean anything. They stop someone from wiggling the doorknob, but 
People are so dedicated, they will literally bring tools in to melt your locks down to rob you or murder you and eat you. Just whatever, because you need to do what you can to survive on this drama. This is where Conrad landed. And now there's another thing with Conrad Kerr is just the Primarchs. The Primarchs are all predetermined to be something. Every Primarch have their role. Magnus, obviously gonna be a gifted scholar and psyker. Gilliman, the peak empire builder. Like from birth, their tool set is that. Conrad's is very definitely meant to be law, order, and justice. In another world where Conrad lands on a planet that is normal or has a support network that exists, he had nothing. He might be like the judge or just any form of law in order in the galaxy. He'd be judge, jury, and executioner, but he'd do it like justly. And when you land him on a planet where the concept of order is a joke, it's gonna fuck you up. And this isn't the first Primarch to have their like actual cause be fucked. You know Angron, the giant ball of murderous rage, the demon man who currently is just barely coherent and sentient? Yeah, um, his primer power before he got the butcher's nails put in was actually he would take in your pain and negative emotions and like lift off of you. One of the things he would do as a kid is he would actually comfort the other slave kids in his area, just make them feel better. He was like the fucking Jesus type, just that very supportive figure. And now look at him. The upbringing fucks you up sometimes. So yeah, Conrad Kerr's upbringing fucked him up. But I think it gets a little deeper than this because another method for Conrad, the reason he's the way he is, he had no one around. He landed on Nostromo and the first thing he did just as a Primark baby, young adult something is he was, you know, he needed food. He was hungry. So he ate the first thing he saw, a person. I'm actually unsure if it was in self-defense. I wouldn't be surprised if it wasn't. But there's a funny little power when it comes to eating meat as a space marine or Primark. Because for some reason, when they eat meat, they actually imbue themselves with the memories of meat. So if you eat a person, you see their life story flash through your head. Now, what happens when your only educational system growing up is eating gangsters? It, it, it fucks you up. It messes you up. All you see constantly is the most horrific acts ever while you have this strong, innate feeling of you need everything to have justice and order. There is a debate in psychology, and I am obviously qualified to talk about this, as someone who took psychology 101 in college of nature over nurture. I think the current consensus is like 51% nature, 49% nurture. Now, imagine you with your nature and your nurture directly fighting each other like at war. This would just fuck you up. As everything in this upbringing, as I've stated, it ruins you psychologically. And to this point, Conrad felt like he had to do something. He would intercede in some crimes he saw, stop the crime. He didn't care about saving people. That wasn't the point. It was to punish the wrongdoing. And eventually he found just killing them didn't do anything. Because like, that's just normal in the strong and like whatever, you just, Someone dies, who cares? So he had to get more creative. He'd maybe let one of a group live, horribly maimed, as like a message that the night haunter is coming. Or he'd skin them alive and hang them off the telephone poles. And it would escalate and escalate and escalate, which deals more with that nature over nurture war. Because now he is committing horrific acts, like, the most reprehensible shit. He is becoming a monster and he realizes it, but he also has that sense of order that knows if he saw somebody doing the exact same shit he's doing, he would punish them for their crimes, but he can't. He's himself and he needs to punish the crimes. And that is the thing I like about Conrad. Conrad Kurz is very self-aware of his actions and has to extremely justify it. And he has some methods of doing this, mainly his philosophy of fear, because his main point is that's the thing that keeps people in line. It's not loyalty. It's not just a sense of honor. It is fear. 
because people will try to do some horrible shit if they think they can get away with it. There's a great example where he's proving this point to Vulcan. He gives a prisoner a bolter and then just says like, all right, that's yours now, have fun, bud. And then turns, tells his men, do not attack this man. And he starts walking away. This prisoner in this moment is like, oh, this man's been destroying my planet. And the first thing he does under no sense of danger, points the gun and tries to kill Conrad. Which of course Conrad immediately turns and butchers the man. And that's his point. When there's no threat, people just do whatever. And like, he's so adjacent to being right. He's, I, I can see the point. Like, yeah, that's a very motivating factor that isn't an excuse to torture people's family, broadcast their screams on the radio, and mandate everybody in the area have to listen to it. I'm going to quickly expand on this because I forgot to. One of the main problems with this theory he has is where he's right, t kinda. He is correct in the short term when he is actively there doing his horrific acts. Everything is utopian, crimeless, perfectly ordered. The second he leaves, it collapses. His main methodology is not sustainable at all. Because yeah, fear is very motivating for a lot of people. It'll make them, you know, not act out, not try to pull some weird bullshit, try to be scummy or be criminals. True. It only works when the direct threat is there. I mean, the second Conrad left Nostromo, things went back to the way they were. The old powers that be took over again from the Imperium and Nostromo became a hellhole again because the Night Hunter isn't here. We're scared of the Night Hunter. We're not scared of the Imperium. And I can see a lot of people being like, that, but yeah, he's wrong. That's why he sucks. I don't know. I have a different perspective. Personally, I really like the fact that he's wrong. I like it when characters have to try to persuade themselves and everyone around them that they're correct. No, my way is the right way. And then you look at them and there's so much evidence proving them wrong. It's There's something about these type of characters that I really fuck with. So for me, this is an incredibly large plus for Conrad Kurz. But of course, more mental gymnastics because how do you actually rationalize this behavior in your head? All you want is justice and order, and this is the carnage you're doing, hanging skin off of your armor. Like, how do you justify that? Well, Conrad does through fate. Because one of Conrad Kurz's powers is the power of foresight. He can see the future, which is a relatively common power for certain psychers. Like, fun fact, Sanguinius and the Emperor, they also can see the future, but there's a difference. Conrad Kurz believes there's a single strand of fate. Destiny is unchanging. You can't do anything to intercede. Sanguinius and the Emperor disagreed. The Emperor really believed that you could affect fate, and Sanguinius believed there were some visions you'd get that were just going to happen. They were your canon events, Spider-Verse stuff. But you could affect fate. And Sanguinius and the Emperor did, granted some minor stuff. There's very big pivotal points that they couldn't affect, but you know, Conrad Kurz believed that nothing was changeable because from childhood, all he saw were visions of him becoming a monster in the main key one, his father sending an assassin to kill him. So all of these actions you're committing, mentally breaking under all of this horseshit you have to deal with. Yeah, you're gonna justify that, yeah, future can't change because that's my end point and this is what I'm doing. I'm working to that point. If that's untrue, I chose to be this. And Conrad's entire argument is he had no say in the matter. The Emperor built him this way. He was landed on this planet by fate. He is destined to be the monster. And that's the main argument. If you actually read the Conrad Kurz Prime book, you should. It's fantastic. The primary argument that Conrad Kurz has to a uh, flesh sculpture he made of the Emperor, it's an entire argument he has trying to get the Emperor to come into this flesh sculpture and talk to him as he's yelling about how he never had a say in the matter, never had a choice, was stuck to be like this forever. So in reality, it's the Emperor's fault for all of his kill count. But he's just wrong. There's always a choice. There's always a choice in the matter. Sanguinius could do this. And also, 
The chaos gods can affect your visions because all of those psychic visions come from the warp and the chaos gods can directly fuck with you. Sanguinius had his head in a fucking swivel because the chaos gods would constantly feed him wrong visions. Connor never did that. And I think one of the reasons too is he enjoyed it. He liked doing this. He liked being the night haunter. And you can see this as he goes on, he starts doing some horrific things purely for his own enjoyment. I think at that point near the end of his life, he completely gave in and was down for it. And then that he could battle away that, that nature of his, of law and order by saying he never had a choice when in reality, he was a psychotic fuck who enjoyed hurting people. I'll slide this in here. Uh, this is also my admonishment of the theory that Conrad Kurz and the Night Haunter are two separate personalities. Uh, besides the fact it's yet another shitty portrayal of what dissociative identity disorder is, that's not how that fucking works. You're not literally two people in the same brain. Uh, it also cheapens his story. It cheapens a story by trying to tack on a thing of, there was still good in him the whole time or all that. No, the story of Conrad occurs is a very broken man justifying his existence and his horrific atrocities through whatever mental gymnastics he can. And the moments that Conrad Kurz breaks and shows true fear, the fear he's inflicted on millions of people are the moments where he could be proven wrong. There's a moment where Sanguinius locks him in a stasis tube, shoots him out into space. Not to kill him, he doesn't want to kill him. Specifically, he says, once the horse heresy's over, once the siege is done, I'm gonna find you, bring you to dad so he can forgive you. Because that act of forgiveness undermines everything he's done. He's chose to be the monster and he's just as reprehensible as the people he killed. And that's the moment where he knows fear. I think the main point that really sells, he had a choice the whole time, is the event of his death. He foresaw the Kaladus assassin, M. Shen, who would come and kill him. And he knew this would happen. He kept seeing this vision. So he ordered his night lords not to attack. Leave everything empty so M. Shen can walk directly into his throne room and kill him. And in that moment, Connor Kurz, fully armored, fully weapon, granted they're you know, they're uh, actually replicas of his like famous Primark weapons, but eh. he had his weapons on him and he did nothing. He didn't fight. He just sat there and let her kill him. And he could have done something. He could have just killed her, but that's not the point. Because if he did that, it means he had a choice. And like he said, death is nothing compared to vindication. 